So welcome to today's presentation on media stereotypes. This is one word that we hear very often about uh, stereotyping and stereotypes. And today we'll uh, talk about uh, uh, how this word came into uh, our academic field and uh, how as media persons or as the media and communication students, we must be uh, uh, aware of uh, the things surrounding stereotype and why do we uh, adopt all these uh, uh, mental shortcuts as we'll see. So uh, stereotypes basically are generalizations about uh, uh, other others generally, about members of other groups. So they are not based on our own firsthand experience, but based on some certain generalizations that we've learned about others from the mass media, not exactly from, uh, you know, about them, uh, for, from our meetings with them or people of, of that particular group. So as we said, there are two very important things. It's about an out group, people belonging to some other group. And we learn about them through generalizations from the mass media, two important things to remember. Uh, the word uh, has its uh, origin in this uh, uh, printing technology, which is, uh, if you can see on the screen, this is a, a, this is called a stereotype. So basically, it's, it's a printing plate which allows mechanical reproduction of the same material again and again and again. So this is uh, what what led to the word being coined by Walter Lippmann. We'll just see in a moment. So it's, it's a rigid mold which uh, allows us to reproduce the same printed content again and again. The rigid mold is again a very important term there. So Walter Lippmann wrote this book, uh, Public Opinion, in 1922. And uh, uh, this is a very important book on, on public opinion, on, on propaganda and all these things. So uh, I'm just uh, uh, quoting uh, Walter Lippmann uh, uh, because he was the person who coined the term stereotype for us. So that, that's where the study about stereotype, it's basically more in the field of psychology, but it's uh, very, very important for our field in media and communication as well. So Walter Lippmann says, for the most part, we do not first see and then define. We define first and then see, and that's very important. That the definition of people of that out group, that comes to us first. And in the great confusion of that outer world, we pick out what our culture has already defined for us. Our culture means uh, basically the kind of way, uh, the life that we lead. So uh, the mass media and all these things, they have already defined for us that what an other means. So basically we uh, take that other as, 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 as a given and then we uh, 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 define or we uh, see that person based on that particular framework. So. Uh, based on what our culture uh, has uh, picked out in the form of a stereotype about the other person. So this is what uh, uh, Walter Lippmann says. And Walter Lippmann also provides two or three uh, important reasons why we accept these stereotypical images. First of all, it, it, it does not require a lot of effort because we already have a familiar idea about what that person could be or what that uh, uh, person coming from that particular area is like. And then we do not have to expend a lot of uh, mental energy there. Say, for example, if you have an idea about what a Chinese person would be like, then uh, whenever uh, we come across a Chinese person, then we visualize that person with the images that we already have in mind. So it leads to an economy of effort. And it is also a defense, which uh, Walter Lippmann says. Why is it a defense? because it makes us feel very comfortable in our own world. It's like a kind of a cognitive resonance because we expect certain people to do certain things. And uh, when we see it is happening like that, we feel more at home. So we expect uh, certain people to be villainous, if I can use that word. And if, if he or she behaves like that, then we feel more at home. And you can see television employs that, that, that uh, in, in, in a big way. So if, if a person, for example, is, is supposed to be a vamp, then he or she looks like certain things or has that uh, kind of a, uh, uh, image. And uh, then, then we expect that person to behave like that. And when they behave like that, we feel more at home. So that is more of, more of a, uh, you know, uh, in, in Lippmann's word, more uh, uh, for defense of what we already believe in. Uh, so it's a guarantee. This is what he says. It's a guarantee of our self-respect. It is a projection upon the world of our sense of our own value. So, uh, so these stereotypical images, they have uh, uh, feelings attached to them. So these are like, uh, you know, traditions for us. So 
if a person uh, has an image of of that particular kind uh, uh, among us then uh, then then you know it, it, it's just repeated and reinforced as we will uh, see so, uh, there's another thing which uh, 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 lipman talks about which is about the blind spot which i will uh, talk in a moment's time uh, the uh, study about stereotypes basically talks about it generally in in negative terms so uh, this is from dominic uh, lasorsa and uh, uh, this is what uh, he suggests that uh, stereotype is a category based cognitive response so i have categorized people into certain categories and i identify that person into that particular category and the affective counterpart means how i feel about that uh, those categories is uh, prejudice and uh, how i behave is discrimination so generally this is about uh, uh, stereotyping in 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 in, in race and we'll see uh, uh, more about that when we talk about blacks then we see them to belong to certain categories or or uh, even when uh, in certain cases even gender roles are stereotyped and the xenophobia so if we people if we see people of other nationalities so this leads to some kind of intolerance because we have certain uh, 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 preconceived notions about uh, what they are or what they could be so uh, this is basically a negative uh, response or the effect is generally seen in terms of neg uh, you know uh, all those all those negative types of stereotypes we'll see that the media uses it for some other purposes also we'll see that as we go along so uh, for example perkin suggests that there is a male stereotype uh, the the he man stereotype and also the upper class stereotype and which is a le leader stereotype and the other stereotypes are defined in terms of opposition to these kind of stereotypes so if he is not male upper class then he is this and that is why he is other or he is uh, inferior in certain cases or whatever or that is what a uh, lot of uh, stereotyping is about so stereotypes are learned early they are learned early because mass media provides us with these images uh, again and again so they are reinforced because they are repeated and they are encountered repeatedly and that is why it is automatic we'll we'll talk about mental shortcuts that we employ and that is why these stereotypes are uh, very automatic and why are they automatic because most of our social encounters are superficial uh, we do not expend a lot of energy uh, or uh, mental energy in uh, trying to find out about uh, those people so they are they belong to those categories so that is why because we have been through this process of of uh, Uh, stereotypes through through repetitions and uh, uh, such things that is why whenever i uh, see a person belonging to that particular category i i immediately think that okay these are the characteristics of that particular person but if we think deeply and i will talk about these two thinking systems uh, in my presentation today but if we think more elaborately and more systematically then we can see beyond the stereotypes then uh, people uh, you know a black person will be not a stereotype but he will be something else then a woman will not be a stereotype then something much more uh, than that so this is about uh, the the ways of thinking or why we uh, uh, see certain things as stereotypes and why we do not see other things as not stereotypes we'll talk about that in uh, details as well and stereotypes uh, can occur in a lot of environmental uh, contexts as i said it it can occur in in terms of gender roles it can uh, occur, occur uh, you know as an out group and it is also a reflection of power which we will suggest uh, in our uh, uh, presentation today as well so uh, in the next part so the first part was about the um, historical perspective in stereotypes and uh, what are the various ways of looking at it now let's start talking about uh, uh, how stereotypes are used by the media in the media and what are the purposes uh, that that media puts stereotypes to so first of all we've seen earlier that media are a very powerful uh, tool to develop reinforce and validate these stereotypical beliefs so uh, in indian cinema for example the stereotype of uh, of a south indian was what mahmood would play in film after film about somebody who was uh, good with music or who would speak with certain accent and so on and so forth so every time a south indian uh, had to come to uh, uh, these uh, hindi movies uh, uh, the image was was just reinforced and validated and that is where uh, our our response to those people or our ideas of those people would be based on these images particularly when our personal experience with those people is very limited we are not going to meet those people 
uh, in our uh, everyday life more uh, very regularly so that is why these media images are extremely important in developing these stereotypes and my ideas about that particular group or that particular category to which that person is uh, put into as as uh, uh, as a stereotype so uh, why does media have to deal with these stereotypes one of the very simple answers is that it assists them to uh, uh, build that narrative without expending a lot of resources so if a person has to be identified as a villain it's very easy to just uh, give him a particular type of costume give him a particular type of of uh, 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 so, uh, you know uh, dialogue delivery and these kind of things and and without the, uh, you know putting uh, in a lot of things into the story just by looking at that person people can very uh, easily identify that person as a as a villain so it helps the media conveniently provide information about social groups into simplistic identifiable images which are easily accepted by people and which are also easily understood by people especially when they have uh, no personal experience of of uh, meeting such people so uh, to reach the broad audience uh, uh, the media employs these attributes of it could be ethnicity so if a person has to belong 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 to the middle east he or she is shown to have certain attributes it's is there in hollywood also in a big way so if if we've seen the big bang theory uh, where where uh, uh, raj kutrapalli was the indian uh, stereotype there very often you know he was a person who who would love snakes and who would you know uh, uh, eat certain kind of food or speak a certain kind of language and that's where it's very easy to put out uh, uh, the message that okay he is an indian just through these attributes or even gender or class or employment or even religion or 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 even mental or physical disability so so every mental patient in hindi uh, movies would have that particular characteristic with that kind of of of, of guffawing laughter and you know uh, a different kind of uh, of uh, of uh, you know violence and all those kind of things so every time it had to be a filmy uh, 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 you know mental uh, disorder that person would be just into that particular images or those few images so these uh, are are actively uh, these are automatically activated whenever we encounter these symbols in the mass media whenever we see a, a, a mad person who they want to show on the screen just by you know those simple cues they can put the, their message across that okay we are saying that he or she is a mad person or things like that even with, with age and uh, disability and all that so whatever these attributes are uh, they are trying to put them into more simplistic images for us and they also act as self perpetuating expectations because we expect so we expect chinese to have these attributes we expect uh, 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 people from 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 the other group to have these attributes and uh, uh, we only uh, pay attention to those attributes which are consistent with the stereotype so if i have an image of of a, of a chinese person being of a certain kind and if i get uh, uh, an, an information which is not consistent with that image then i will mentally disregard that image or i will mentally ignore that kind of an image or i will ment mentally discount that image so the images uh, that i have in mind uh, i have been uh, exposed to over a period of time generally through mass media and through uh, uh, other avenues these are the uh, images that i hold about those uh, Uh, out group as i have suggested and if i get information which is not consistent with that kind of image then uh, I, i i might disregard that information and uh, in, in television commercial this is from from an american example by nicole farris and if you see the gender stereotype how women are portrayed so uh, this is uh, as you, uh, as i repeat this is from an american example but you can find a lot of uh, A resonance in, in in Indian advertisements as well. The woman is always portrayed uh, to be somebody who's cooking or washing or or, or you know doing uh, this this household household work or even you know serving food or you know serving breakfast or dinner or, or things like that. Or even when they're talking about diet products, they 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 are about women and all. So this is a very uh, you know kind of a dangerous stereotype because you are expecting uh, 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 these gender roles uh, whenever you 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 talk about uh, women and this is what has been seen in uh, although there are some 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 very uh, uh, very good exceptions but generally uh, uh, and this is just uh, maybe 10 20 years back but this is what uh, was the stereotype about 
women at that point of time. And the stereotype of blacks also, and this is from Master and Greenberg in their journal article of 2001, the blacks were often seen as lazy and untrustworthy and unintelligent and largely, you know, uh, demeaning kind of roles just to entertain uh, the white uh, audiences. And they were shown to be living in, in ghettos and slums and, and, you know, all that. So this racial ethno uh, ethnic stereotype is also very common in American media as well. And here also we have, you know, different uh, communities being uh, exposed to some different kind of stereotypes. So when, when a person belongs to that particular religion, he's supposed to uh, uh, belong to a particular category of uh, stereotype. Uh, one way in which uh, this can be uh, countered is by depicting counter stereotypical content. And th this has been seen in uh, educational programming as well, that when uh, children's uh, uh, negative uh, stereotypes are broken through content, which is not stereotypical. So, so they could be showing a black doctor or, or a black engineer or, or, or a black scientist, for example, then their positive at, uh, attitudes towards uh, uh, then there is a positive attitude towards these ethnic minorities. So this uh, counter stereotypical uh, content is also very important or has an important role in breaking those stereotypes. So uh, uh, we uh, have also seen that these stereotypes have uh, very important repercussions in how we view them in real life as well. So if I have a particular stereotype of a, of, of a particular category of people, and when I actually meet those people in real life, then probably those evaluations uh, uh, follow me or those are the evaluations that stay with me. So if I have had a negative ethnic imagery uh, for, for people of a particular nationality, and if I see them in uh, uh, real life, then those evaluations are also negative at that point of time. So there is an explanation for that, and uh, this from the field of psychology. And I have a different uh, uh, lecture on this on, on cognitive dissonance. But still, when we're talking of uh, stereotypes, we have to uh, uh, talk about these two systems of thought that operate within us. And uh, this is how we can uh, explain stereotypes as well. So the first system automates, uh, operates automatically and quickly. So the moment I see a person, I immediately uh, uh, create some kind of an impression about him or her. So that is where my mind is working in the fast system, as I can uh, say. And the other is the slow system, or which is known as the slow thinking, where we allocate more attention and where we uh, do a lot more of, of uh, you know, uh, cognitive, or we provide a lot more of cognitive effort, or we provide a lot more thinking about uh, uh, those uh, situations. So say, for example, I give you, uh, I just show you an image of an angry man. The moment I show, show you the picture, you will not think a lot about that person. You'll immediately think that, okay, this is the background. This is what he is uh, doing, or this is what he might do, so on and so forth. But if I do uh, give you a long uh, multiplication or division, that is where you're not going to uh, use your uh, fa fast thinking. That is where we use our slow thinking. So these are the two systems that are within us. And our brain decides when to take that fast thinking and when not to take that fast thinking. So as you can understand, when we are talking of stereotypes, we are suggesting that that is where the, uh, the fast thinking of the brain is in operation. And I will tell you how if we use slow thinking, then we can uh, uh, break free of those uh, stereotypes. So this is again from the work on, on uh, fast thinking and slow thinking and from the field of uh, 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 psychology, basically. So the first system, which I told you, it, it, is, it, is, it is fast. It is, it is non-conscious, it is, it is reflexive most of the times, it is automatic. So we don't put, a, put in a lot of thought in that uh, way of thinking. And the other uh, thinking is the slow thinking, which is conscious, which is controlled, and which is based on rules and uh, all such things. So the first process is intuitive and in, in intuitions, we uh, go for stereotypes and all those mental shortcuts. The other is the reflective, where we expend a lot more of cognitive effort that means we spend a more uh, that we spend more effort on thinking and that's where we uh, go in for more uh, uh, sophisticated understanding and uh, generally we as humans operate as cognitive misers means whenever there is there is a complex situation or whatever we want to conserve our scarce mental resources we depend on those mental shortcuts so when that stereotype is already in my mind, I will create, uh, create an impression about that particular person. So if the stereotype in my mind is about, about, about to say, for example, uh, uh, dishonest politicians, the moment I see a politician, 
that is is is, is triggered and I, I without going into the background of that person and the work of that person or whatever my uh, mind immediately tells okay the the politician could be corrupt because we are always looking for these men or often we are looking for mental shortcuts because we have to make these judgments uh, regularly and uh, that is when uh, 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 we uh, apply these mental shortcuts about uh, uh, stereotypes for example that this person belongs to that category so he must be like that so, since he is uh, behaving like that you know just uh, throwing the peanut uh, uh, shells everywhere so he must be you know this 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 kind of a person so we make all those impressions based on just one or two seconds of interaction we do not uh, uh, go into uh, details about those kind of things so as i uh, i've said about this earlier as well uh, when we are into a system of stereotypes uh, we put more attention to the facts which support the stereotype so so as uh, so th that way it is self perpetuating because uh, when i see a person and i've given that chinese example uh, uh, and one of the reason is that uh, you know uh, we 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 uh, see them as other they are, they are not uh, uh, belong to in group and they belong to an out group so whenever i see a person and uh, some of those things which i thought was true about chinese and if i meet this person and which is seen to be true then uh, 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 we we will uh, say that okay this is this is true we will not even uh, give uh, uh, credit or we will discount the information which contradicts from from the stereotype so that is how these stereotypes are perpetuated and reinforced as well uh as i said so this is a stereo we we uh, uh, resort to stereotype whenever we are using this fast thinking process so it is there these both processes are within us so uh, stereotype thinking is is a, is a way of fast thinking process and it is very natural because when 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 these uh, 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 problems appear familiar and where uh, based on that information i can get a reasonable uh, image or i can get a reasonable understanding of that particular person then i go for fast thinking i don't go for uh, uh, any other kind of thinking and the other thing is that this is also how the power balance plays out because it is the powerful who pay pay less attention to the powerless so the poor people they uh, they are seen more as in stereotypical forms and that is why because you know we do not pay attention to to the details that is why there is a fast thinking and that is why you know this this stereotyping also uh, uh helps you know kind of uh, maintain the status quo you do not uh, get into the details and that is why you can't see the problem so very often you uh, don't can't see the, the the problem of the other group because you are seeing them as stereotypes okay why are they protesting because uh, it doesn't seem true but because you are seeing that as a mental shortcut you are seeing them as uh, these uh, uh, through these stereotypical lens and whenever you can expend more thought into those people and that's where you know the, the the slow thinking comes in because if you think if you spend more energy thinking about those if if we spare more cognitive resources i've just said that we are cognitive misers but if we uh, 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 do more thinking into those things then we can uh, 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 go beyond the stereotypical images and then we can see the uh, 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 non stereotypical uh, uh, parts of uh, the person and in the second last uh, uh, slide here i'm going to talk about uh, four different kinds of uh, uh, stereotypes so this is uh, uh, based on on uh, the research in the field of uh, psychology and they see uh, people in in terms of uh, two different uh, 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 as i can say criterion one is is the criterion of warmth and the other is the criterion of competence so if i see uh, another person with less warmth and with uh, and i see that that person is less uh, competent then the stereotype i have about that particular category is contemptuous because there is less warmth and i don't regard those people as as uh, being competent so anybody who receives welfare or poor people they are often seen as uh, a contemptuous stereotype so i i uh, think of them as a stereotype and i don't even think very highly of them i think of them as as uh, uh something to be uh, uh, with with contempt uh if the other people you're talking about uh, there is low warmth about them but your your you regard them as as of a high competence so generally there are certain and you can see that this is generally in terms of the american society they see asians as as uh, people of high status and competitive but again the warmth is not there 
so that is why this is known as the envious stereotype so whenever you see people of a high status and who are competitive means uh, uh, whom you regard as as uh, your competitors that's where you have the envious stereotype so there are a lot of envious stereotypes we have in our uh, place as well so many, many people they regard uh, the, the business community uh, community with with some kind of an envious stereotype because uh, the warmth for them is not much but we uh, regard their competence as high then the other kind of stereotype is the paternalistic stereotype where the warmth for that uh, uh, community or that group is uh, high but uh, we regard their competence as low so well when they are elderly people or or, or house makers or disabled people then we uh, regard that as a paternalistic stereotype uh, the other is that of the admiration stereotype so that that generally is, is between the in group so uh, you have a high warmth for them and you have uh, you regard them as uh, people of high competence so you will regard that you know there are a lot of people within who you think that they belong to your group or they, they are your allies then you have an admiration for them so how you react to stereotypes is also depends on these two different uh, factors and finally we, uh, one way in which we can counter stereotype is by realizing that all of us are susceptible to that kind of thinking that uh, we can always uh, fall into that particular trap because this uh, uh, category of uh, 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 fast thinking is, 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 is inherent and it's there with everybody so if we are aware of these stereotypes then we can uh, uh, address a lot of uh, negative problems associated with uh, stereotypes so this is how and this is where i end my presentation